I'm Henry Little. I'm Chief Executive of Opera Rara, and it is my huge pleasure to welcome you to our launch of our latest studio opera release, which is Donizetti's uh, Les Oulets di Roma. So um, I've just been told, actually, that today is um, another great bel canto composer's birthday, which is Rossini, um, who I guess by my standards, it being a leap year on February the 29th, is probably around 75 right now or something like that. But that seems a very auspicious uh, occasion on which to introduce uh, our latest Donizetti recording, which I believe is number 27 in our uh, list of previous and current uh, Donizetti recordings. It's an extremely exciting project, um, which we are very, very pleased to uh, share with you all. And it is part of Opera Rara's celebration of the 225th anniversary of Donizetti's birth. So there are lots and lots of good reasons to be celebrating this event. Lazy Lady Roma, in common with the significant majority of our recordings, um, is being given in a new critical edition of the score, which we, Opera Rara, made in 2022. And uh, that edition is now part of the growing catalogue of Opera Rara editions, which are available for worldwide distribution through our partners, Recordi, uh, in Milan. We recorded the opera in May 2023 at the Fairfield Halls in Croydon, and then we performed it to a very enthusiastic capacity audience on the 11th of May 2023 at Cadogan Hall in London. So uh, that's just by way of introduction, and we're now going to see a short video Video which is going to tell you more. Donizetti's Les Olets de Roma is a tremendously rich and powerful piece. One of the most significant achievements of his early life. The music is really wonderful. It's very beautiful, so fascinating. Nicola Alaimo has a fantastic stage presence. He acts through his singing. It's a masterpiece of Donizetti. I'm singing Argelia. This is a role that's fantastically well suited to Albina Shagimaratova's very special talents. Laser Lady Roma is Operara's 27th Donizetti recording. It's a unique company. Nobody does this in the world. Understanding Laser Lady Roma is going to increase the respect that they will have for him as a musical dramatist. Thank you very much. Um, uh, before I go any further, I would want to say that this project, in common with everything that Operara does, simply would not be possible without the support of our many supporters and donors throughout the world. And there are many of you on this call today, and to all of you, we are tremendously grateful um, because we quite simply could not do what we do without your help. So without further ado, thank you very, very much indeed. I want to go on to introduce some very other very special people who are with us tonight um, and to talk about their association with Les Oulets de Roma. Um, we have several members of our cast. Um, Kezia Bienek is uh, with us, as is Luis Calvet Ipe. Um, the tenor, Sergei Romanovsky, uh, is also uh, with us, which is tremendously exciting. And you're all three uh, extremely welcome. And thank you for making the time uh, to be with us. Um, I would also send apologies on behalf of our baritone, Nicola Alaimo, and Albina Shagimaratova, who are not able to join. Nicola is, in fact, right now uh, getting into makeup and doing his vocal warm up or whatever it is that he does before going on stage at the opera uh, de Monaco for a performance 
of Jiskiki. So he has a very good reason for uh, not being with us. There are many other people associated with the success uh, of this recording. I've caught sight uh, on the um, on the, on the Zoom canvas of all your faces of Ian Schofield, uh, who uh, prepared the score for our new edition. And Ian, as always, we're very grateful for your work and thank you for being with us. We also have the Italian musicologist, Eleonora Di Cinto. Uh, and Eleonora, once again, thank you for your association with Opera Rara and you're very welcome. And of course, we have one of the regular ingredients behind our many successes, which is our repertoire consultant, uh, Roger Parker. Uh, but before I hand over to Roger, I want to introduce the final, by far the most important person behind the success of this recording, and that is the brilliant and inspirational conductor Carlo Rizzi, who is uh, Operara's artistic director and whose outstanding leadership has uh, created, I think, a very successful, I hope, potential new life for this wonderful opera. So, Roger, Carlo and Eleonora, over to you. Well, thanks very much, uh, Henry. Yeah, this... Um... <clears throat> This opera, Laser Lady Roma, is um, I wrote in the program in the program book. I think it's uh, it's from a period of Donizetti's life just before 1830, where he sort of got international success with Anna Bolena, um, which has not been explored very much. And uh, I think we in Opera Rara are beginning to make a case for saying that this is a very important period in his life, this period in the late 1820s, and that actually Leso Lady Roma was probably uh, the beginning of this kind of new experimental phase that he went into. I mean, we'll go into more detail about, about what exactly is innovative about this, but I wondered whether um, it would be a good idea to start with Eleonora um, because I, I, with Ian Schofield, I'd done the edition of this work and done a lot of um, a lot of editing and a lot of exploration of its history. And then I asked Eleonora to write uh, one of the program book notes, and she, <clears throat> uh, somewhat to my embarrassment, but also with pleasure, um, demonstrated an aspect of the opera that I hadn't thought about at, at all before, which was about its um, its basis in ancient Rome. Um, Eleonora, just tell us tell us something about what, what you said in that program note, because I still find the connections really interesting. Yes, with great pleasure. But first of all, thank you for this uh, great occasion for me. It's a really pleasure to be here for, with you. Um, Yes, um, I would say that uh, despite its title, Lesure di Roma uh, is indeed a Neapolitan opera, and uh, this could be uh, this could seem a contradiction, but um, the ancient Rome uh, was a, a particular feature of the Napoleonic Empire, so the Napoleonic era, and uh, it became. Uh, uh, one of the most important features of the uh, um, Mura power in Naples in the decades, um, uh, in the first decades of the 19th century. And so uh, during the, the French government uh, of Naples, um, the ancient Rome um, uh, had a really a great importance, um, mostly because um, the French government um, gave uh, an extraordinary impulse to discovery to the discovery of the Roman cities of the ancient Roman cities that are in the neighborhood of Naples. And I'm talking about naturally of uh, Ercolano and Pompeii. And so uh, many uh, important buildings, in particular of Pompeii, uh, were discovered during the French years. Uh, and this uh, 
cult, this importance of the ancient Rome was present in the theater as well. Because, you know, uh, the most uh, important Roman opera of that time, of the, Neapoli of the Napoleon uh, time, and I'm talking about La Vestale, uh, was performed in Naples in uh, 1811 in uh, an Italian translation. And La Vestale remained um, very much present in the operatic life of the uh, Teatro San Carlo in the following years. So um, I would say that many other titles uh, written by different composers, uh, such as Manfroce, such as jo um, Pacini, um, took this important opera as a model. And um, so L'Esule di Roma um, presents itself as uh, the last chapter of a long history of, uh, of this ideal that at first was uh, connected with the French politics, but uh, after the fall of uh, the French power, it remained in the Neapolitan community as a particular feature of the community itself. Yeah, that's it's really fascinating. It, I, I, <clears throat> I always thought of ancient Rome as being a sort of neutral space, but I think what you demonstrated is how politically active it was as, as a choice there. So it was really, really fascinating that. And one of the things about Les Oulets, I know that, Carlo, you were most interested in is the is the musical personalities and really it's the personality of Morena that's at the center of this, isn't it? In all sorts of ways, the thing that makes this opera so unusual and innovative. Hello, good evening to everyone. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Morena is a character that uh, already uh, almost before to come on stage uh, is uh, uh, a character that is very um, full of remorse uh, and uh, we know that uh, what today would be called his mental health uh, is not uh, really very very sound because uh, um, he uh, well this is the one that basically gave Setimio you know sent Setimio away um, but is um, for me the car the, the interesting thing about Morena is that uh, uh, the way that Donizetti is able to portray this. Uh, this character, this isn't this madness, particularly with the first number of the of the of the second act, and uh, <clears throat> there are only few characters of Donizetti, male, the Gomad. I think there are three. Uh, one is uh, uh, Il Furioso Elisario di San Domingo. The other is Torquato Tasso. Uh, in fact, the opera Torquato Tasso, the third act that is about 20, 25 minutes, is is mad scene, just that. And then there is Legione di Roma about Morena. And uh, for me, um, particularly having uh, the possibility to do it with uh, Nicola uh, Alhaimo, that is such a stage presence, not only vocally, but also, uh, you know, the nuances that he put into the voice uh, really has been uh, a wonderful, a wonderful thing um, about uh, being able to explore the way, and we can talk about this maybe later, uh, in which Donizetti portrays this, uh, this madness, because it has to do uh, completely with uh, the way that Donizetti intended the, the drama, and the uh, that this is why for me Morena is interesting. And I think uh, Nicola has um, left us a, a, a brief clip, hasn't he? He can't be here tonight, but I think he's... Could we see that now? Is that possible? I think he's sent us a message. I'm Nicola Nicola Alaimo, e interpreto la parte di Morena, un personaggio meraviglioso eh, di Gaetano Donizetti, tratto dall'Esule di Roma, eh, che fa parte di una trilogia cosiddetta romana insieme alla Fa a Fausta e al Poliuto eh, mi dispiace moltissimo non essere con voi questa sera perché sono all'Opera di Monte Carlo interpretando Gianni Schicchi nel capolavoro di Puccini 
eh, ma sono felice di potervi introdurre il videoclip che vedrete fra poco eh, di una scena molto importante, eh, direi eh, forse la più importante dell'opera dove Murena un po' perde la sua eh, sanità mentale perché eh, si trova costretto a dover scegliere fra il proprio ruolo di padre eh, innamorato della propria figlia, delle proprie figlie perché ne ha due e per l'amore della sua patria e questo lo, lo mette in, in una sorta di, di delirio mentale che è degna veramente dei, dei grandi compositori e di un grande compositore come Gaetano Donizetti eh, ci fa sembrare un po' la scena di Assurre nella Semiramide e, e quindi è veramente una scena eh, prepotente, una scena veramente straordinaria eh, sia a livello musicale che a livello drammaturgico e interpretativo e quindi sono felice di annunciare questo videoclip che vedrete fra poco eh, con la Britten Orchestra eh, diretta dal maestro Carlo Rizzi eh, che è stato un, un grandissimo maestro eh, dalla quale ho tratto eh, tanti spunti e eh, tanti consigli veramente straordinari. E grazie per avermi ascoltato e alla prossima. I think you see immediately from that clip, it's very interesting how, in some ways, Donizetti, in order to project this mad character, has to let go of some of the bel canto aspects of his musical style. It's really, that was a good example of that. Sorry, I do have to say something. Uh, I was just thinking about, <laughs> about the fact that... Uh, um, yeah what we have heard uh, this is the second time uh that uh, of the cabaletta the, the final part and i was just uh smiling about the fact uh, that uh, this is the time when um uh, nicola sang the variation that um you know that we wrote uh, and uh they sound pretty good actually i have to say <laughs> and that is uh, yeah. is uh, good yeah no um the, the the thing actually that uh, for me is uh, uh, was is interesting is that this scene that finishes in such a uh, strong mood uh, it start uh, almost uh, um, what uh, in Italian we would call balbettando uh, that is uh, stammering uh, because uh, the scene start uh, with uh, with uh, um, uh, Murena just uh, uh, imagining uh, the Setimio has gone into the the circus uh, to be to be eaten by by the lions and uh, is uh, is almost uh, the way that Donizetti portrayed this and and and, and again I, I come back to the to the dramaturgy of this of this opera particularly of the role of Morena is uh, so incredible because on a very simple base of the orchestra there is almost no melody there are just words and uh, it's so um a simple uh, economical uh, uh, but at the same time effective and uh, to have the span from that beginning uh, to this then uh, 
this, re this resolution at the end is an incredible journey just in three minutes three minutes and a half of uh, of music yeah yeah it really is extraordinary but i mean there are other characters uh in this opera and one of them uh is setimio the tenor and uh it, we have sergey uh with us tonight who who sang this role so so wonderfully in the recording and the concert and it's a i we talked about this again it's a it's a tricky role in some ways isn't it because there are there are two arias one in each act but the aria in the first act is quite different from the one in the second act in all sorts of ways don said he wrote it much later um and included it and i wonder what what, what you thought about how to put the character together with those two arias which have rather different demands on you yes it's a bit uh, tricky to to think of both arias in the same evening yeah but uh, uh i think uh, in this case better to not think a lot yeah about the difficulty of first area or second area just step by step to uh to do to sing and uh, uh, i think it's uh, this is the key and of course uh, uh, for me it was the first time uh studio recording and uh I just want to say uh, thank you to all of us for the help, uh, especially to Carlo Rizzi, our wonderful manager, uh, for the very, very, very good advices. And uh, I think also uh, it was very useful for me uh, as a singer, uh, as a, as a on opera actor if, if you want to to have such a strong cast uh, in this opera and uh, i was uh, a bit nervous at the beginning because it's first opera recording for me in the studio yeah but uh, i repeat uh, i just want to say thank you and yes uh, both areas are incredible beautiful yeah, and 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 really, what you made of it was was extraordinary of both these areas. I think we now we have a, a clip. Is that right of the of the second aria that that you you sang? So we can give people an idea of um, the vocal qualities on show. It's wonderful, so beautiful that aria. Um, Carlo, we we are supposed to talk about Donizetti, the dramatist. Let's. Uh, and uh, Let's. I think the focus here is on this the, the the way that he ended the first act, which was completely unusual. Normally, you expect at the end of the of the middle of the opera to have a concertato finale with 
all the chorus on stage and everyone screaming at the top of their head. But here you get something quite different. Yeah, in this, uh, th this is an incredible moment, really, because uh, is incredibly elaborated. Uh, this, uh, uh, you know, even in the parameters of uh, of uh, the constriction of the form, uh, the, the formality of the writing of the time. Uh, but this is a terzetto to start with a huge. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the uh, at the score on the iPad. A huge um, clarinet solo introduction. Then. Uh, there is a recitativo, a recitativo that is not just asking hi, how are you, but is actually uh, Settimio hinting uh, the, to to uh, Argelia that uh, her father was the one that sent him uh, uh, into exile. Um, and the interesting thing of, of talking about the drama of this uh, is that uh, the uh, this is a recitativo uh, accompagnato, so the orchestra is an uh, integral part uh, of uh, the dramatic action. And the way that uh, the Donizetti write this, uh, he uses so much uh, um, uh, rhythmically uh, and harmonically also um, what he, you know, is uh, the, the technique to express the anxiety and, uh, and the anger, uh, you know, uh, for example, when Settimio is describing uh, uh, what happened to him, uh, uh, that uh, he met this person and this person uh, um, embraced him and they, and they told him the name of the person that actually sent him away. There is uh, all this, uh, um, this uh, figuration, rhythmical, it's not just... Uh, putting down some chords uh, just to mark uh, the change of the harmony. But is uh, really, this drives the action. Then there is a big chorus that come in. And then uh, after this, uh, there is, uh, uh, again, Settimio um, and, uh, and Argelia, they, they, they talk about this. Uh, and then Settimio finally gives the, the um, papers uh, that he got uh, to Argelia where is written that... Uh, the traitor basically was uh, was her father, and then we hear the father coming in, uh, Morena, the part of Morena that is already uh, Alf Mad is is have uh, some some visions, uh, and uh, and this is not even started basically the 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 the, the finale because then <clears throat> we have uh, an incredibly beautiful slow part. But I just wanted to to show you something uh, visually also graphically. Uh, I don't know if you can, uh, can, can you see this, uh, the, the score here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you see this part here that now I am indicating uh, is difficult. Uh, yeah. Is uh, no, the, the wrong page. Pardon. You will see that the part of Morena uh, is uh, all full of rests. Um, um, in fact, uh, the music uh, is... Uh, because he's just been put in front of Settimio, e stesso, la mia vittima, qual Dio, mal guida, papà. It's like if he really is so short of breath. And uh, then we have Settimio that again speaks to him, uh, but not in an um, in a operatic way. Uh, it just tries to reassure him. And then on the top of this, we have this line of Argelia uh, that is really bel canto. So, in the same music, we have three different state of uh, three different state of mind. That is something that I find is uh, is uh, quanti something quite spectacular. In uh, and uh, together they create this trio that is full of tension. It's not just beautiful; it is beautiful. There is uh, uh, this line of uh, Argelia that is really wonderful, but is uh, really so 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 intense. And yeah, uh, it's, it, 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 it's interesting that, I mean, everyone talks about the, the Rigoletto Quartet as the moment where uh, finally <clears throat> characters express themselves individually within an ensemble. But this, this is absolutely the case in this, in this, uh, in, in this trio, isn't it, already, that each of the oh, characters yeah. has a completely different personality within it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I mean, I could go on for hours, and then maybe you don't want to do this. Uh, but uh, uh, honestly, studying the score, you really see 
the way in which uh, Donizetti uh, using, uh, as I say, the same way to write uh, uh, with some mm, different uh, genius moments, uh, he can portray uh, something from something loving to something crazy in uh, in the same uh, in the same in the same music, yeah. and uh, and this is where also there is another thing, you know, this is a is a sort of uh, all the three roles uh, they are trying to updo the other uh, about being. Uh, full of honor and uh, uh you know because timio want to save uh, moreno moreno want to, um, to want to save setimio uh, argelia want to save the father and setimio and uh it's like if they have three halo on the head one uh, <laughs> each other because uh, um and um, this uh, also um i'm not i don't want to say that one uh, uh, want to overshadow the other, but uh, in a way, this is what is happening, uh, and the music, you know, grows, grows, grows uh, because of this dramatically. I think we have Al Albina has recorded an introduction to to a clip which is towards the end of this terzetto, so you can see yeah. all this this tension coming to a coming to a climax. Hello everyone. I'm sorry I'm not able to be with you this evening to celebrate the launch of Le Zule de Roma, but I'm glad to be able to introduce the next clip of music. I've had the pleasure of recording other roles with Opera Rara, but the role of Argelia is a very special one for me. She's full of fire and also vulnerability. And Donizetti's writing for the voice showcases these intense elements of her character. I'm happy to share with you a clip from the studio of us recording the Act One Trio. I hope you enjoy the recording and may Opera Raro continue to find, restore and record many great operas like Le Zule di Roma. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, Carlo, I think you were going to uh, talk about the 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 briefly about the other characters. Uh, we have Casey. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Uh, uh, we have um, basically six characters. Uh, the the three that uh, you know, Morena, uh, um, uh, Argelia, Esetimio, and then uh, we have uh, Publio. That is uh, another one. Uh, that uh, is on the way of being uh, 
do do good uh, with uh, with honor that is uh, the roman general um and uh, then the uh, confidant of Ar argelia and then uh, we have uh, flavio and lucio that are two um two other roles uh, um, um of the in the in the roman uh, roman soldiers and um we are uh, uh, in this uh, in this recording. Uh, this has been played by Kezia Bienek, Luis Calvetti Pei, and uh, Andre Henriquez. And um, um, well, of course, then uh, the orchestra was the orchestra of the British Symphonia and the and the chorus of Opera Rara. Is um, you know everything uh, contributes in this kind of uh, of jobs to the to the fact that you know of how a recording comes out and uh, i have to say that uh, it's been a really a fantastic a fantastic experience uh, uh, because uh, every time when we discover something new and, uh, and we do it with opera rara uh, there is a of course we we study the parts but then the what happened is that uh, is in the real moment when we need to to do what um, you know to create the goods because uh, uh, everything is new. So it's during the rehearsal we uh, really bond together uh, musically uh, in uh, in creating this. And so thank you, thank you very much to 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 everybody that ever participated to to this recording. Um, I actually um, many many years ago, many years ago. Um, I was uh, not part, but was uh, in uh, on the side of this recording because I was working to a production uh, when uh, uh, Leisure di Roma has been done many years ago. And I don't know the the funny part that we have not yet uh, um, we have not yet uh, said, but uh, the person that was recording the part of Morena at the time was another Alaimo. Uh, was uh, uh, not uh, Ni Nicola, but was the uncle of uh, of Nicola, and so I think that basically the one hundred percent of people that have sung the role the role of uh, of Morena that uh, the still alive uh, is uh, in the Alaimo family, <laughs> Simone Alaimo and Nicola and Nicola Alaimo. Um, but I would like now to just give you another moment of this uh, recording, and this uh, is um, uh, the love duet in between uh, uh, Argelia and Settimio when they find each other after the Settimio has come back to Rome uh, incognito, and this is the the final part of the duet, and uh, just listen to. The way that again uh, uh, Donizetti is able to create uh, uh, such a happy, positive, jumping, I would say, uh, kind of uh, of music uh, to uh, describe the happiness of the two lovers that meet each other again. Um, for now, thank you all very much for being with us. As I say, we are incredibly proud of Lazy Lady Roma, and we hope that it will uh, attract a wide and uh, enthusiastic interest from the public. But to those of you who are our champions, 
our supporters and our donors. We are tremendously grateful to your help, as we also are to our artists for their collaboration in making Lazy Lady Roma a success. So thank you very much for being with us, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.